So hello and welcome to another video. So in today's video, we are gonna have a little basic training conversation. I got a lot of questions from you guys and I have a few topics that I want to cover. So that's what we're gonna do in this video because I know if you're going off the basic training, if you're in your process of like joining the military, honey, you got a lot of questions. And I'm just gonna go off and say, nobody can really answer them, okay? <laughs> I would say nobody can really answer them, but I am going to do my best to just give you my experiences. Like I always say, everyone's experience with the military, with the army specifically, because that's what this video is about, is going to be different, okay? One person might have a really great experience. The other person might not have a great experience. I'm not speaking for all. I'm just speaking from my experience experiences there and things that I saw while I was at basic training. So like I said, it's like a totality of my experience. Does that mean that you're not gonna have a great time? Does that mean that you joining the army is not gonna change your life? No, that's not what that means. This is just my experience. And I wanna say that the possibility of, like let's say something was handled wrong. So yes, you have a good time, you have a great career, that's amazing. But if something is not being done the right way, the possibility that someone's gonna correct it or just the right thing is gonna be done is very unlikely. Um, I told you guys in a recent vlog about I haven't gotten paid, so my last paycheck has not come at all. And you know, that is kind of aggravating because you work somewhere, and that was one of the things they were telling us like when we were chatting out because we had to clean and we just had to do a lot of duties. They're kind of like, oh, you're getting paid, so just shut up, basically. But to not have gotten your money is kind of annoying. There's no one that you can call about it. Of course, you can call the, there's like a 1-800 number. I call that number, but there's no quick resolution to a lot of the problems that arise within basic training and just within the military in general. Like it's always, they say hurry up and wait, honey. It's hurry up and wait with everything. So even though I didn't, like it's not dire need for to have my money right now, it would absolutely, like what if it was, you know what I mean? They didn't give me any solution to a what if it was type of situation. And it kind of, like I said in that video, was like a personification of just my whole experience. But I said all rambling all that to say that um, you might not have a bad experience. And I just want to give you like some of the, some of the things that just, that we just went through that it's kind of not good or bad. <laughs> it's not good or bad. I just want to let you guys know, cause like I said, I know you guys have questions. So let's get into today's video, as if we already aren't into today's video. So I have the questions here on the iPad. I'm just gonna go through really quick and see if I can answer any of them. I have a question about the breast exam. Are they going to push and squeeze your breast? Um, if you've ever gotten like um, like a um, yearly breast exam when they check for like, you know, lumps in your breast, that's probably what they're gonna do. That is what they're supposed to do. They might do something different. They might not go all in depth. It just depends how many people are there. It just depends on the doctor. The doctor that I had specifically, she worked in labor and delivery. So she worked alongside of OBGYN. So she did things very, she did things that way. You know what I mean? So are they gonna do that? I don't know. And I'm not sure, like when people ask me questions about are they gonna do specific things? I'm gonna say this because I said this before. If you have something to hide as far as health wise, do not hide it, okay? Don't hide it. I know you might think like, I really, really want this and just go forward with it. Don't hide it. And when I say don't hide it, I mean like, I'm not talking about silly stuff. Like you went to the emergency room because um, you thought something was wrong. You went to the emergency room and there was nothing wrong, stuff like that. But if you really legitimately think that you have a problem, don't hide it. Like I have seen her, um, like I've seen terrible things happen. I've heard horror stories, just don't do it. So if you're asking this question because you wanna hide that you do have a lump in your breast, go get the lump in your breast checked out, okay? Especially if you're having other like adverse kind of health issues, go get it checked out. I wanna use this moment to tell the story and this, this video probably gonna go like this. Probably gonna be a little long, okay? Um, so when, when I was chaptering out, there was a girl there who, she was upset because she was a week away from graduation. And what well, wasn't a week, like they were on graduation week. Um, 
So that week she would have graduated and they chapter her out because during the last, so the forge, she passed out, but she had passed out several times during the basic training and they just didn't kick her out. You know, sometimes the drill sergeants, they see how bad you want it and they also don't like, they don't make you go to sick call. Like they can't make you go get something checked out until they can. So she passed out and she was upset because she was like, I don't have the condition that they're saying that I have. Like, it's not a big deal that I passed out. And I'm thinking to myself, passing out is a big deal. And it was cold outside when we were there. So it wasn't like heat exhaustion passed out. Passing out is a big deal. I mean, I get it like, girl, no. And just think of the kind of work that you're gonna be doing. You know, maybe you don't have one of those strenuous jobs, but passing out is a big deal. Passing out because you're running, like normal running, normal walking, the forge is walking. Passing out because of that is a big deal. Okay, so you have some just type of condition where you're, you know, passing out and things like that, like just go get it checked out. And she was further upset because she said they let her pass out like before and they didn't even worry about it. They kind of just walked over her. And when she got up, you know, pour, they said they poured water on her and just made her continue on the process. That was during the other events, but they made a big deal about it during the forge because they were like, nah, like this ain't what's up. But before, they kind of make a joke about it, you know what I mean? So she was upset, she was like, it was fine before and then all of a sudden it wasn't because at the end of the day, they could get in trouble for that. Like you can't just be pat letting people pass out and then, you know, you know. So if you have, if you have a health concern that is like serious, get it checked out, don't try to cover it up because you might find yourself in a situation where you don't get the proper medical attention because they say, oh, well, it wasn't in her paperwork. Like, she lied about it. Um, I saw a guy, um, I was, actually, when I was chapter now, I witnessed a guy saying, like, he got over a peanut allergy. And I'm like, so you're not allergic to peanuts anymore? And he said, yeah, I am. I just said that I wasn't. And I'm thinking to myself, honey, you you haven't went to basic training yet. You don't know how, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, some of those MREs, they will know what that stuff contains. So to sit here and say that you don't have an allergy, that you know that you have a deadly allergy to, just to get in is stupid because I have seen them literally, someone literally can't breathe because they're having an allergic reaction and then be like, she fake it. So if there is something wrong, don't try and hide it like go see about it that was a long rant but all all for one question will they examine your breasts they probably are i mean they probably are. i can't remember if she just looked at them or if she i think she just looked at them but they're supposed to like actually be feeling okay um the next question is do they pull your medical records again even after you've been cleared during the pre-screening process with the recruiter. So this is another one of those questions that kind of fall on the same, you know, do they pull your medical records again? They can, you can go to sick call and something can happen and they could have to pull your medical records. If you chapter out and you try to say like, oh, this, this condition wasn't existing um, before, they could pull your medical records for that. And I will tell you that if you went to a military doctor, so anytime I went to sick call or anything like that and I went to a military doctor, if I decided that I wanted to re-enlist, all of those things are gonna be able to be pulled up, okay? If you went to a military doctor, if you didn't, it might be a hit or a miss. It just depends on what type of, I'm gonna say infraction, it just depends on what it was. You know, their, their system, Genesis don't pull up everything. It does pull up everything inside the military system, okay? Um, is there a specific reason why you left the Army? I spoke about that in the video that I will link. Um, however, like I said at the beginning of this video, don't let my experience discourage you. I really just want you guys to be aware because just to think that it's all roses and flowers or, and people saying, oh, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be challenging. I want you to understand like what type of challenging it is. That's my reasoning for, what was that? That's my reasoning for telling you guys the story, um, but that's the reason why I left, okay? So, um, please, how many weeks is basic training? Basic training is 10 weeks. Mine was 12 because we got to go home for two weeks on holiday block leave, and this is Army basic training, so, you know, different branches differ. Um, I passed my ASVAB. 
but I am overweight. So the recruiter gave me four weeks to lose some weight. How did you do yours? Okay, so this is a question I definitely want to answer. Um, passing the ASVAB, congratulations. Um, let's talk about weight. So if you are not a person who is used to working out, even if you lose weight, you still need to get used to working out. So you can be at the weight requirements or below it, saw that a lot, and not physically in shape, okay? So I would work on those together, okay? And it might take more time, but I would highly, 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 highly suggest that you take all the time that you need so that you don't add stress to your body and stress to yourself, okay? Going into this environment never having been like in shape or just not in shape um, because you're gonna need to be in shape. Like I'm the weight, I didn't even think about my weight one time while I was there. I was, my weight was fine. I, it was a big deal to get in to meet the tape and all that kind of stuff I get. But once I got there, it was not even a worry because I was able to keep up physically with, you know, they have obstacle courses and things like that. Like I told you guys, at one point I was showing girls how to do push-ups like the correct way. So just making sure that you are able to do this stuff, that you get into shape. Um, your weight will come. And I'm not saying don't focus on it. Just don't forget to focus on actually being able to do the workouts actually being in shape don't just lose a bunch of weight and then go there and then I want to tell you guys if you watch that chapter out video I think I mentioned a lot of people who were in Bravo which is where you go when you get hurt um they were injured a lot of people got injured girl during the first 100 the first week two weeks we were there a lot of people got injured doing things like running so that leads me to believe that they had never ran before and I have been I had run like I run all the time I mean I just run for fun I don't run for weight loss and none of that none of that kind of stuff um most often I just run for like mental health honestly so I know that running is one of those things that it takes time to get better at, at without injuring yourself so just take your time I'm going to say that. Take your time. I know that that doesn't sound like the best answer, but please take your time and don't be so focused on losing weight that you forget that it's about more than losing weight. It's about actually, you know, physically being able to keep up with all the things that they're going to make you do. And I, I keep saying that because, like I said, I've seen people pass out um, and get little to no attention. I've seen just people hurt in general and... I don't want you to be, I want you to be well and go into this environment. I don't want you to just hop in and be like, oh, well, I'm at the weight, you know? Um, I had a gallbladder removal and two C-sections for the birth of my kids. Is that disqualifying? The gallbladder, I don't know because I know a person who was missing a spleen and they chaptered, um, he got, he got him chaptered out. I know you could probably get a waiver for it. So that's something that I would not hide. I would bring up to my recruiter, let the recruiter know and like go through the whole process of getting a waiver so that you don't go through all of this, go to basic training and then be sitting at Charlie 95th because they gonna chapter you out. Um, C-sections, births don't um, disqualify you. Um, I would imagine if there was like, you know, if you had a problem during one of the births, that might be something to bring up. But if they were just normal births, then that's fine. Um, hello, I'm 29 and 5'3". What is the weight limit for that? Um, that is actually my exact age and height. Um, and it's going to depend because my weight at 5'3 might be very different from your weight at 5'3. And I say that because it just depends how much muscle you have on your body, just where your weight distributes. Um, so I did tape because I don't carry a lot of weight, but during my, like around my midsection, I do carry a lot of weight during my legs. If you're that type of person, you just have a more thicker build. Taping is probably going to go the, it's probably going to be the best way for you. And in that case, you can Google it and see, um, the measurements because things change so much. I wouldn't give you a figure in this video. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. How do you prepare for boot camp in terms of work, working out and getting in shape? Headed to MEPS in a bit. Um, you prepare by doing the workouts that they're gonna have you do. Um, I mentioned this before, learn how to run. Be able to run at least two miles. If you can run three miles, you're gonna be 
fantastic, okay? Because by the time that everyone else is running three miles, we don't run three miles. They don't run three miles. But by the time everyone else is able to run three miles, you'll be able to run more because of the conditioning, right? So just be able to run at least two miles. You'll be good. Um, and push-ups. Be able to do push-ups. Do not leave your house and head to basic training without knowing how to do a push-up, baby. You're gonna have a hard time. You're gonna have a hard time. And not only are you gonna have a hard time, but you're gonna be in pain. Push-ups hurt, okay? Push-ups hurt. Your arm is gonna be hurting, your neck gonna be hurting, your back gonna be hurting. Take care of all that stuff at home. Learn how to do push-ups at home. I would say <clears throat> I started off doing increments of 10 and then I cre increased them. So take it slow. Um, I'll try, there's, look in the army playlist. There's a video on there and I showed you the little plan I use. Also, I would do planks just because it helps with your core and core strength is going to be essential for some of the foolishness that you're gonna be doing. So just, as long as, running is the one that's at the top, running and push-ups, make sure you can do those. Put yourself in a flat front leaning rest position, <laughs> okay? And stay there, turn your music on, just stay there. Cause that's the kind of stuff that you're gonna be doing. Okay, all right. Everything else is fine. Um, did they watch you while taking a drug test? I can't use the bathroom if someone is looking. Absolutely, they watched. If you had a tampon in, they knew. They watched. Um, so the whole fear of being seen thing, like some girls like, oh, I don't want people to see me naked in the bathroom. And I was like, get rid of that girl because that doesn't even exist. Like, you can't. That's not, <laughs> look, that's not it. Um, how long was boot camp? I already answered that one. What's the weight requirement? No, 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 no. Okay, so this person asked a very lengthy question. I'm just curious if the only way to get to MEPS in my state is to go on plane and fly there, according to my recruiter, if I end up being at the back of the line and stop and they stop swearing in people for the day, what should I do? Because I wouldn't have the option of coming back the next day. So my office, they took care of all of that. Like they knew who was about to swear in. They knew where you were in, where you were in your process. And they would hold the last group of us, you know, so that everybody can get in that last swear in process. Okay. So that looks like it for the questions. I, if I, oh, I did forget one. If I forgot some, which I did, cause I'm not, I haven't scrolled all the way down. Um, I apologize. Can you post the link to the backpack? Yeah, I did that already in that video. So um, if I forgot any of your questions, I apologize. Just ask them on this video and I will be sure to answer them like I'm doing right now. So I just wanna talk a little bit about the phases. Um, I'm not gonna do this video separately, like blue phase, red phase, white phase, because newsflash, let me tell you something. You can stay in red phase the entire basic training. The phases are only used to describe your treatment, okay? So in red phase, you do not have a lot of, um, what is the word? Mm, privileges, okay? That's what they use to describe your privileges, the different phases. Yes, during each phase, they do different things like, um, the beginning of white phase really consists of a lot of like range days and things like that. So yeah, just different phases consist of different things. Red phase is just kind of getting you used to everything. It's a lot being thrown at you. So I do want to mention that, that they could red phase you the whole time. So you could technically be in blue phase and y'all be carrying around a red flag and you be treated real red phase like, meaning um, you still have to be walked to the DFAC. Um, you still have to be walked to the church if you want to do services. Like there's just certain privileges depending on your battery, but there's just certain privileges that you don't get within certain phases. And my favorite, you know what my favorite privilege of white phase was? That was being able to have the PG tell us when to sit down. So instead of waiting for everyone to get their tray and just standing there with your tray, the PG, could say like the last, or, or a battle buddy. It didn't even have to be a PG. It just could be one of us. The last person at the table could say when to sit down, you did not have to wait on drill sergeants. In red phase, baby, you will be lucky if you don't have to wait for the whole battery to come and sit down before you eat. Hot food wasn't a thing. <laughs> when I finally got to eat my meal, when I actually was served it, I was so excited, okay? Hot food wasn't a thing for a very long time. So much so 
that I was actually excited to see the MRE on some days because you could make it hide. <laughs> okay, all right. So the first thing is, the first 72 hours is grueling. If you have never been in an environment like this, the first 72 hours is terrible. The first 72 hours is where the drill sergeants basically find the people that they're gonna pick on. Um, and I was one of those people. So they just find the people that they're gonna pick on for whatever reason, if you just, maybe you stand out in some way, maybe you're older. I, like I mentioned, they picked on a lot of old, like people who looked older, which I really didn't like, but hey. Um, yeah, the first 72 hours, and it's a lot. Like, they just make, they set very unrealistic goals. And in your mind, you're thinking you have to actually do it because you do. But you're not keeping in mind that they know that you can't meet this goal. Like, they told us, our bay was on the fourth floor. They told us to uh, go upstairs, um, change our clothes, unpack some things, and then come down in like two minutes. Something silly like that. It's like, they just tell you to do stuff that they know won't happen. I'm, I don't know what to tell you. Um, the next thing is we visit the warehouse and we got issued our gear. So this day was like, girl, they, it was terrible. <laughs> it was bad, but it was only bad because that, that equipment was heavy and to have to carry, you know, you're not walking, you're not, you're not allowed to walk. You have to run. So just to have to carry all this stuff up to the fourth floor, it was just, we all were like shoved in this cattle car. And it was, if you're claustrophobic, honey, I mean, I had people's bags this close to my face. It was crazy. But that was one of the things we did. We visit the warehouse. Um, it's really the drill sergeants kind of establishing who's in charge amongst themselves as well. Like everybody wants to be the meanest. Nobody wants to be like, oh, that's the nice drill sergeant. They don't want that. Not in the first 72 hours. And dang sure not in red face. They want to be not not at all but especially not in red face they want to be very like they want to show you that they are in charge and that you are nothing but a basic trainee okay um learning the soldier's creed and the only song you had best know the soldier's creed before you get there okay at least learn it in reception like i did because i did not know the soldier's creed before i came i tried to study it but i just couldn't get into the swing of it when I got to reception, I studied the Soldier's Creed, okay? Because you don't have to say it, so you might as well learn it. The Army song is easy to learn. I would listen to it just so you can get the tempo of it, but it's easy to learn as well. I learned it after like the first time I sung it, but at the end of the day, that's how I learned the Soldier's Creed. I wrote it in like song form. So when I sing things, I don't know, it just, it's something else in my brain goes on and I can remember things easier. So that's what I did. I sung the Soldier's Creed to myself, and I was able to memorize it. Um, they ask you a lot of random questions when you first get there, like, just random stuff. Like, like I told you, your age, just, I saw them asking people, like, uh, why your head flat, um, making fun of people if you're a little larger. You know, a lot of people came from the program. Remember the program that I thought I was going to have to join in South Carolina? Well, Seeing the people who came from the program, I'm not being rude, seeing the people who came from the program, I was, I don't, I wasn't even close enough in weight to need to go to the program like I thought that I was. Um, so they were just picking on people, like, you know, just, they were doing a lot, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, we're gonna leave it at that. And we had a lot of MREs and high A's when we first got there, and high A's is basically the same food from the defect, just set outside in these little green, like, oversized Tupperware containers, we're gonna call them that, because they don't really keep anything warm for too long. Like I said, cold food, you can just be happy to eat. You're not gonna care that the food is cold, but we had a lot of that. MREs and high A's and red phase, and then once we started to get to the next phase, then we started to eat. And not even get to the next phase, just where we were supposed to be at the next phase, because they held us over in red phase. Um, we had a lot more defect time. Learning the correct uniform. My God. <sighs> Learning the correct uniform. So when you wear a certain uniform, especially the PT uniform, because it's winter time right now, and I was there in a winter cycle, you don't just get to wear, you know, a short sleeve shirt and then zip up your PT jacket. There is a way that you have to wear this uniform. And a lot of the time, especially when we first got there, they told us to put it on and then they made people, they made us like take it off to make sure, like to 
point out the people who didn't have their uniform on correctly. So whatever they have you wearing, you have to wear the uniform correctly. So your sock color, everything needs to be correct, okay? And you think, the moment you think you're not gonna get caught is the moment they say, um, take off your beanie and put on your PC. And then you're caught, okay? So just don't do that. Learn the uniform. If you can learn the uniform at home, cool. If not, once you get to reception, at least learn what to do. Pay attention at reception as far as like the information, formation, um, the, pos the positions of attention. Like make sure that you're paying attention to that information that they're giving you there because it will make it easier for you. And another thing is learning the ranks, learning to read the ranks. So learning what you do when you see someone of a certain rank is going to be imperative because I was totally confused once I got there. So, um, like I said, there is, once you get to white phase, you did a lot of range days, um, and on range days, you're really eating a lot of MREs, okay? The hammer and stuff is in there, but I think red phase is the one that has the most stuff going on, and it's really the most challenging phase, but like I said, you can be red phase throughout the entire basic training, but at this point, they know you. Like, once you get into white phase or the time that's supposed to be white phase, they kind of know who they like and who they don't like. And some people, they just don't like all the way through. You know, some some people, like I had that one experience with my senior drill sergeant, but the other drill sergeants, you no, know, there were some drill sergeants there that I liked. There were some that were nice. There were some that were nice to me. Like they all weren't bad. It was just the one who was in charge of me was bad. You know what I mean? So I just want to make this little video to encourage you on whatever you decide. I just don't want you to go into this experience blindly, like I said. So as always, if you have a question, ask a question and I'll see you in the next video.